Cassie, what's up? How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? Good, good. You, you had a little bit of a wait there, so thank you for hanging out. We appreciate that. Um, I'm psyched, obviously, to do this with you. We, we've talked several times. Uh, you've been in various programs and everything for years, and you know it's really cool to see just how far you've come, and so I'm excited to do that with you. Why don't you just take a moment and just kind of introduce yourself to everybody and uh, let them know who you are. Well, obviously, my name's Cassie Dunn. Um, I'm currently just a single agent here working on growing my team and the you know, southeastern Michigan area. So I don't know what else you want to know, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about why you're actually here right now, right? Like, tell me a little bit about your story. Like, right now, you're obviously in real estate, but you have a, you know, a path that was beyond that. You know, it wasn't something that you always thought you'd be doing. You thought that you'd be, I don't know, running the massage uh, uh, studio or something like that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that, like where, where that brought you? Well, for sure. So I originally was doing a sales career where I would travel all of the time. And I just, I realized like my own personal health was struggling then. And I just, I loved helping like exercise and fitness. I'm flipping tires. Like I was just a cool kid back then, you know? And, um, my dad was really, uh, not well. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm sick of traveling all the time, which I know you love to do, but it was starting to wear on me at that point. <laughs> and, um, I decided like, I'm going to go into this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to help people get better. And that's what I'm going to do. And <laughs> I did it. And I had my first child and I don't know, I know you're weird about massage, so I won't go into that a ton, but, um, I started doing 40 hours massage a week just to keep up. And I had had my first son. And then after my first son, I, an average massage therapist does about 15 a week. So I was doing 40. Um, I tried to add therapists and something would always happen. Like I don't get enough work. I get too much work, you know? So it was just kind of like keeping someone to keep up was very difficult. So I had to take, you know, the burden of the entire business. And then I got pregnant again and here comes Nova here soon. And I'm realizing like we are struggling to make ends meet. 40 hours a week is starting to kill me. I, you have children, so you know women struggle when they're pregnant. <laughs> it's physically demanding. The job was physically demanding. And I had this random client with a frozen shoulder who was like, you should get into real estate. And I'm like, okay. And so I did. Why, so I why took did they the say that by why, why, why do you think that they recommended you get into real estate? Um, I think because of my dynamic personality and just like, I guess when I talk to people, like I try to connect with them and their needs. And I think she just felt like I connect with people and, um, I think it was just a personality thing. I think she's like, you got the grit and like the energy to do it. So why don't you give it a shot? And I was like, well, I can't do this forever. I definitely can't be a mother of two and working 40 hours a week and then running, because that was just the number of massages, right? So it was 40 hours of massage. You run a business. So and then you have to run all the back end. So I was, you know, 70 hours a week, just trying to keep up. And I got two little ones and, you know, one still like has to be delivered. So it got tough. And so I went and took the course and I didn't do any real estate until she was born, which was a horrible delivery, traumatic delivery. So really I didn't get started until she, like September after she was born. She was born in April of 2018. And so I got started in September of 2018 then. Wow. So, so tell me, cause you kind of went over the massage thing, right? But like the truth of the matter is that was kind of a devastating moment. I mean, we talked about this. It was. You, you, you had that business that was supposed to be the business that was, mm -hmm. you know, you take anytime you start a business, you take a chance on it. Did you invest money into that business? Was it, did you come into somebody else's practice? Like what was, what was the actual story with that? It was all my cash. So when I did that sales business, I made it, I, you know, I was a 21 year old making like 120 grand a year. Like I didn't, like, I just had money and I'm like, I'm going to do this. So I invested like four. 40 grand into that business. Like I bought furniture and I actually had a partner. So the partner backed out and then I was already 40 grand into the bill. Like it was, I was already 40 grand in. You can't back out then. Like, yeah, it's not something I was going to be able to sustain on my own, but that partner backed out. So we started actually taking out like Lowe's credit cards and Home Depot credit cards. And before you know it, you're like, okay, there went all my cash. And now I'm like 25 in at Lowe's and Home Depot. And um, so like, that's where the overhead, not only was like the rent, the building, like, suffocating but the debt we took out in order to make it happen became suffocating so i was i was literally running the operating costs plus all of this debt and so it was just getting overwhelming and i hired a therapist that i thought was going to change my business he's fantastic and anyways and then i get a call from a lawyer one day and like here i am i'm like six months pregnant and i get this call and she's like hey cassie uh, is this Cassie done? And I'm like, sure is, you know, and she's like, I'm so-and-so from attorney at law. And I'm like, that doesn't sound like a good conversation. <laughs> um, and she said, Hey, just want to let you know that one of your clients is pursuing a lawsuit against your therapist. So-and-so. And I was like, this is going to be terrible. I am literally into up to my eyeballs in debt. I can barely see straight. I can barely walk. And I do 40 hours of massage a week. Um, this is going to devastate. It's 20 at that point. It was 20, 
2018, early 2018, and I'm so like, so it's really, I mean, it's really not that long ago. Like we're we're talking, no. it's not like this was in 2009, and you know, no. but then I came through and whatever. Like this is not that long ago. Yeah, it's like two years ago. <laughs> Nova is two years old now, so it's two years old just before I had her. Good lord. And this is gonna wreck my world, right? Like at this point, my husband's a stay-at-home dad. So I am our sole breadwinner. I am everything to everyone. And she's telling me that they're going to pursue a lawsuit. And unfortunately, he works at my building. So um, they wanted my insurance, my liability. They wanted some information. And I thought, this is going to be devastating. I have so, so even if I walk away, I'm still walking away with this huge chunk of debt, right? Yeah. Like there's no way to even walk away and survive. So when um, her name was Jane, when Jane said, you might want to think about real estate, I'm glad I took the course when I did because I didn't know how devastating it was going to be. So, so, I mean, you know, we always talk about, first off, the transition to real estate is never easy, um, even for somebody who's starting off in real estate. And so, you know, I'm, I'm always talking about, look, you know, you want to come from a position of strength. You want to have savings. You want to have all this kind of stuff. And obviously that was not, you were not only not coming in from a position of strength, you were coming in with debt. And, and let's not even get into the, you know, emotional side of it, where you just had this business crumble. Uh, you've got the weight of the world on your back. I can only imagine the stress that was on you, right? So you actually start real estate when? September of 18. So she was born in April of 18. That's so not, yeah. because of the complications I had, it took me till September to get started. So two years 18. ago. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, essentially. Okay. So you start in real estate and, you know, this is always interesting to me because that's two years ago. Like, when do you, because I know, I know that you're in a lot of our programs, I know you have been a student with us, you know, whatever. When does that happen? How does that happen, first off? How do we get introduced? How do you get into, you know, working with us and doing that? Like, how does that all happen based on the story you just told me about? Like, I would think spending money or doing anything would be the furthest thing that you're thinking about. Well, so you did an event, I think, at Real Estate One. Yeah at some time earlier that year. So that's where I was introduced to you. I, no offense, but I had no idea who you were. But then again, I was brand new to real estate. I didn't know, you know, <laughs> what a mutual release was. So, me. it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, and so I had kind of caught wind of who you were and Tom Long was my broker there. And he's like, we're having Jared James at this. And I'm like, who the hell is Jared James? Like, I don't know who this is. <laughs> anyways, and so then I was like, well, who is this guy? Like, if he's such a big deal that it's important to know that he's there, it's probably important to know what he does. So anyways, um, I ended up kind of just looking you up on Facebook or whatever, and I was like, oh. And so I just kind of started following your content. And at this point, it's probably, you know, it's, it's starting to become the end of the year. We're struggling. I sold a house, made a huge tax issue, and I'm having to pay my client back, my only commission I made. Um, because that's, that, that was devastating in itself. It's like, oh, I just sold a house. You know how it is when you're starting. It's like, oh, yeah. my God, I sold a house. Thank God. And... Um, yeah, so I had to pay them back because it was the right thing to do. And so they were in my commission. And so then I was like, well, I'm, what's this uh, virtual thing you have going on? So I look into it and I'm like, oh, it's, you know, I can afford, I can afford 50 bucks a month or whatever it was at the time. You're talking remember. about the, vir we, we have the virtual training. You got involved in that? Yeah. So I was like, well, I need something. And this guy seems to know what he's talking about. Um, so anyways, that's what I did. And I think you were doing one of the, one of the monthly things. And I pop on in the, in the chat and I say, if I keep following the things in the virtual class, am I going to be able to make enough money to hire a coach? Because at you, this you point, wanted, we're You struggling. wanted to use, we always call virtual as like the gateway drug to get people into one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. You wanted to use the stuff you were learning from virtual coaching, the monthly stuff we're doing and everything to be able to implement it, make some money and be able to get into one-on-one -on -one where you have an actual coach assigned to you that works with you and holds you accountable and all that stuff. Correct, because when I heard what it was, I'm like, that sounds like what I want to do. That yeah. sounds like where I need to be, but I don't have 500 bucks a month. I right. do not have the funds to do it. I just didn't. And so I asked you that question and it was like, you were like, yeah, of course, that's how it's designed. Like, uh, if you keep doing this, you will get there. But unfortunately, I think <laughs> the, the path I was on, it was going to take too long. We were literally sinking. Like, we had no money. So... I think I reached out and I said, hey, what does one-on-one -on -one coaching look like? And I talked to Red and Red was like, um, this is what it is. It's, it's this much a month. And, you know, I really think you're a strong candidate, Cassie. I think you have like all the pieces, like you get it. You just need a path. Like, so I don't lack motivation in the slightest, not one little bit. That's not right. what I lack. What I lack is fo focus and direction. I lack that hardcore. Um, even to this day, Charles, be like, Ooh, come on back. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> um, 
Get Charles, back on Charles your path, is your coach. So. Obviously, you said Charles had come on back. That's your coach. He's kind of like reeling you in, being like, "Yep, that's that's important, but not <laughs> come yet." <on> back. Right? <laughs> yes, exactly. And well, and that's the that's the um, the tendency, though, when you hear all these ideas, and you're like, yeah. "Oh, that's something I should be doing. That's something I should be doing." And when you're listening, not that, not the, so. That's where the benefit of the coach comes in. It's like, yes, Jared's saying all great things, 100. percent But there's a time and place for those things, Cassie. That's Don't right. get ahead of yourself. And I am the person who wants to dig in and get to the bottom, and I want to do it all. But obviously, at, at that point, I'm like, so uh, Red tells me it's $500 a month, and there's a 12-month commitment. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> and so I'm like, so I embarrass, like, I like humbly ask, can I put that on two different cards? I had to put my first coaching month on two different credit cards. Wait, I don't, even, had I don't even think I know this. So wait, so you did like half of your monthly, so like 250 on one card and 250 on another card? I don't know if you know that, but that's embarrassing. That's oh, no, I embarrassing. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I mean, look, you're, you're talking at the advance, so there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Yeah, uh, but it, at it the means... time, I was mortified, like, hey, is it fine if I put a couple hundred here and a couple hundred? And I did that for two months. Yeah. So I had to call in and make sure, like, no one overdrafted a card or, and made sure I'd paid off enough. And so I, my plan wow. in my head was if I do four or five massages a month, I can pay for this coaching. So I at least know where I can come up with the money. And it was like I told my husband at the time, I was like, what else do we have to lose? You have no job and I'm going nowhere fast. Right. And so we did it. And I signed up and we got started. And Charles, we got, we jumped. Well, so I told, um, I think it was Red, I'm like, I don't need a friend. <laughs> I need a shaman. I need someone to like show me the way. Like I just need a path and I need someone to get me there in a time that makes sense. And, or else I'm going under and like, sorry, but Jared's going to have to come collect the rest of his 12 months. Is, from it, me. is this what you said to your coach? You were like, I need something to happen. This, like I need, is this that is red. This is red, and I'm like red. I am, I'm, I'm a sinking ship. I'm barely. I'm not even the Titanic, man. I'm already underwater, and I'm that person who's like, hey, lifeboat, somebody. I'm still out here, you know. It was pretty bad. So he's like, I think you. They had me take the personality test, which I thought was pretty cool at the time. But they're like, I said, I need a no nonsense. I don't need someone to be my friend. I don't need someone to tell me like you're doing a great job. I need someone to say, hey, Cassie, get your ass in gear. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do to survive. And that's, I think, why I got paired Not Non-negotiable, here's your steps. Like, forget, forget. I always say doing the right thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing, right? So just because something's right for someone else doesn't mean it's right for you. It was a matter of we need to actually focus in on the things that matter to you that are going to get you to where you need to be. And although those other things are good things, we need to not focus on those now because they're moving energy away from where it should actually be. Does that kind of, is that kind yeah, of what we're absolutely. saying? absolutely. Well, and honestly, here's the difference, though. I wasn't an agent getting a coach. I was like a human being trying to figure out real estate and build the business simultaneously. Yeah. I, I was clueless. Like um, CMAs, don't know. Um, taxes, don't know. So, Limited so liability words, You're saying like, I'm so new that like, it's not just that I'm trying to build this business. I'm not completely familiar with the real estate industry. Is that, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Well, like, even to this day, Charles, I'm just gonna put myself out there. Like he wants me to do more real estate related content. But I, even today I feel still so new yeah. that I'm like, I'm not an expert. I can't talk on that. That's my tendency. Because again, we're like in my, I just think I completed my second year in September, just completed it. So he's like, you gotta do it. You're an expert. You know, you sold 50 houses so far this year. How can you well, not be let's, an expert? Let's, but it's let's talk about that because I mean, look, you're, you're, you're only two years in, right? Uh, you were at a place where you're in major debt, you know, just the sky is falling. It's not a good situation. We'll just call it that, right? And, you know, you're here talking right now. So, so where are you now? Like, what does that mean? Like, like, how are you doing from a house's production, whatever? And like, what got you there? You know, like, mm -hmm. how, how are things right now? Uh, right now, they're almost unbelievable. I text Charles the other day. I, I hit my half, uh, eight and a half million mark uh, a couple days ago. So I'm at eight and a half million sold. What, what's your I've average got, price point? My average price point is uh, 200,000 for me. Nice. So nice. I've sold about 43 houses. So I've sold 43, well, I've done 43 transactions. Some of them were both sides. So I've done 43 transactions this year. Um, I have 2 million pending. I have nine pending right now. It's another 2 million. So I'm easily gonna breeze past 10 million. Can we, million can we talk about year. what your goal was for this year? Like, like let's, because again, I could be wrong. And if so, we'll edit this out. Uh, but like, if I remember correctly, <laughs> Didn't you set a goal and then you had to keep changing your goals because you were blowing, like you kind of said like, what do I need to make? And, and it was yeah. like, okay, to make, to make a living, I need to make this, I need to do this many transactions. I need to do, like, is that, is that ringing a bell? Is that true or not true? Yeah, yeah. So, so tell like, us about to, that and tell us what's happened. So 
in 2019, after I met Charles, um, met you guys, I got a coach. Um, so from April until December, I did 2.3 million. So like we really, that was a huge, we filed bankruptcy. It was a freaking disaster. We filed bankruptcy. That was a mess. Um, but doing 2.3 million, I made 65 grand in yeah. my like, what is that? Seven, eight months, nine months. Yeah. So it took me nine months to do that. Again, still learning like the basics, like how do I fill out a contract, do and, all these and things. And by the way, juggling family and other things going on, complications and all that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, you're, you're juggling a lot. It's not like you're a, uh, a 20 year old college, you know, whatever that just can put 20 hours a day towards this. There's still a lot of other things going on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I was severely injured from Nova's birth. So even just getting out and doing like everyday activities, like I'll say it, women pee their pants. I peed my pants after she was born. So I would literally be out like, whoop, got to go to the bathroom. And I'd be like working these 12 hour days because if Charles said, if you do this, you will be here. Right. It's just, a matter, so it's said, just a matter of time. Okay. Okay. And so that was usually my answer for almost everything. Okay. <laughs> if you say so. Okay. And so I ended up completing from that April to December, 2.3 million. So we did our, you know, so at the end of the year, we kind of go evaluate, like, what are our goals for next year? So 65 grand was good, but I got a, I got a four person family. So I, I need to make a little bit more money than that. I got to have business overhead, you know, things like that. So anyways, I ended up, I think we decided that I, I would do about 5 million. If I did 5 million, I could fund the business. We would have money and operating costs and I could make enough to support my family. So, so you did April was, to December in 2019, you did about 2.3 million. You guys were looking at 2020 and you're saying, here's what I need to do. And if I did $5 million, I would be like over the moon, like, like that would be awesome. Oh yeah. I would have access is what it was. I would have access. I would be, I would be fine. And that was a new place based on what you were coming from the last couple of years where you're just that constant, you know, it's hard to breathe, like that pressure of we have so much debt, we have so much, you know, whatever. This is something where, oh, we'd have overflow if I did five million. What does it look yes. like to do five million? Is that correct? Yes, exactly. And how, how many and transactions so, was that? Did you say that your average was 200,000, so it's 25 transactions? Well, well, that was that the year before my average was not 200,000. My average this year is 200,000. So, it was 33 transactions and my average price point then was about 175. Yeah. So, it was like 33 transactions. So, I knew what I had to do. Um, you know, I'm really good at like the non-negotiables. Like you said, these are the non-negotiables. This is how you set your day up. This is how your business is run. You mean like the non-negotiables we teach in the program. Like you have these seven non-negotiables. Yes. This is what you do. Like it, it's not a, I'm too busy to do this. I'm whatever. Like there are things that you do every single day that make you, uh, make you successful. And if you find a way to do other things, you're not going to be as successful. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And if, if other real estate people are like me, if you get off that base, it's so easy to watch it all kind of start falling apart. And so it's not like I got lucky. It's just I stayed consistent. And so it was March this year and um, Charles and I were talking and I'm like, yeah, I'm at three and a half million in March <laughs> and we're going into COVID. So I then hit, I hit five by early summer. And so you, so hit, you hit your yearly goal, even with COVID by early summer. Yes. Okay, that's awesome. First off, if there was a crowd here, I would I would give a, a clap. Uh, what do you attribute that to? Um, just first of all, building it in stages. So I did not believe I was really overwhelmed by the number five million when we talked about it. Right. Um, like with me and Charles, like we saw it was like about one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Like it was very overwhelming because I felt like I worked really hard in my first year. I'm like, yeah. Like I worked hard, but like you always talk about, you build that boat and it's amazing when you're not trying to build a boat and fish at the same time, how much more productive you can be just fishing. So you let, know, let's like, just make sure everybody understands when we talk about, I always talk about the biggest mistake that agents make is they don't understand it's boats before fishing. Meaning before you go out, lead, create, lead, create, lead, create, you need to have the infrastructure in place, right? You got to build the boat first. Correct. So you're saying that, that when you were looking at the amount of work it was to get to where you were, you know, you were like, in order for me to double or triple or whatever it is, I can't exert two and three times the energy like that that's just yeah. impossible so it was almost it almost seemed impossible to you because you're going how am I going to get there I can't work any harder but yeah. it sounds like and you can explain this or not but like it sounds like the building of the boat and, and actually looking at that actually started making things easier to where you could get more done um, with with not having to double and triple that effort oh well, that's what was weird it's like why well, wasn't putting those that my CRM like I, that was all set 
my, my drip campaigns were set. My agent legend was set. My, my drip campaigns in there were set. I wasn't on doing bomb bomb stuff and linking it. Like that's, I did all that in my first year. And obviously yeah. that's why it was so overwhelming because like, Hey, while you're doing building a business, you also have to sell. You are, you are, you're our only salesperson and you're our CEO. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, yeah. do it all. Yeah. So when this year came, especially with COVID, so COVID was super, it's so funny. Cause I, when I, I ended up moving brokerages mid year, um, someone said, yeah, just nothing's happening during COVID. And I was like, Yes, I'm so glad you said that because now I'm just going to eat you alive because I'm doing everything during COVID. Yeah. And like I didn't change my systems at all. Like I still woke up at the same time. I still I still prospect the same way, but it was funny you did a live or did something on Facebook and you said you should be investing in stocks. And so almost simultaneously the Zillow rep called me and he said, "Hey, everybody is dropping out in your area. Is there any way you want to expand any of your markets?" And Zillow does really well for me. I know everybody hates it and they have like their qualms with Not it. But for me, I'm, it's a, I'm all like, ROI, like whatever works. Like you got to have a lot of different lines in the water. Absolutely. And for me, that's what it was. And so I'm like, you know what? I heard Jared say invest in something. I think you said stocks at the time, but I'm like, you know what? I can put money in the stocks or I can put money in like my business, so to say. And that's what I did. So I ended up buying up like three different zip codes were right outside really good price points. And so I, I was getting calls from Zillow leads in price or in zip codes that weren't mine, but nobody was answering their phones, but I'm just sitting there and just answering my phone all day long. And so I ended up just prospecting like crazy. That's all I did. I sat. And so it was interesting. I ended up moving brokerages mid COVID, which was a perfect time. It was a perfect time to do that. And my broker was like, Hey, you know what? We're not open, but if you want to sit in your desk and make calls, cause I live in a two bedroom condo with four people. So it's not very pleasant when you're trying to make calls. And I swear your kids can smell you and they know you're there. They're not going to let you make a call. So I sat basically cooped up in this office all during COVID and I just prospect. And then I sold 30 houses in summer. So what is, you you set the goal this year for 5 million. What is this year looking like it's going to be? So I'm with what I have pending, I should be over 10 and a half million by mid October. So of course, you know, I had that conversation with Charles and so it's, it's overwhelming. So every time we have these conversations, like, where are you at, Cassie? Where are your numbers? It's like, he keeps pushing it. We keep pushing it, but it's like, there's no, like when we moved it to 10 last phone call, like I, seriously, it's every phone call. I'm like, are we going to do this every month? <laughs> every month we're so you guys push just keep number. relooking at the numbers, reassessing and saying, okay, here's where we are. Here's what this is costing. Here's what, like you're looking at your business basically. Every single time. Yep. And so it's one of those things where, um, you know, last last call, it was like, we're going to hit 10. And now I'm already like, so I've done 2 million of business since the last time we had that conversation. So now, now we're at like probably 10 and a half, assuming everything goes through. Um, of course. I mean, there's, but, of course. And then you're going to have other stuff you set up as well. But like, what is that? Has anything changed with your infrastructure? Like, are you still just running around like crazy? Like, I mean, I'm sure there is part of you that is, but are you starting to try to change? And by the way, I don't know the answers to these questions, but like, are you changing some of your uh, infrastructure now? And like, you know, so that, so that you've got other people handling different things and you're not, you know, a, a one person show, like, like what, what's happening? I know you talked about, you know, CRM and those, but like what's in agent legend and bomb bomb and has anything else happened from an infrastructure perspective? Yeah. So, you know, obviously I told Charles, I'm like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. And he's like, nope. And so his big thing with me was once you have six months for an admin in the bank, you can plan for to pay this person for six months, you can get an admin. And March time, March, I closed like some absurd amount of business or whatever. And um, yeah, cause I, you know, I was up three and a half million. I'm like, I just closed all this business. And so now I had it in my bank and I had, we had set it up to where I never paid myself more than 40% of what I made. So the business was always growing while I was still paying myself. All right, so I want to make, I want to make that point again. So, so once you started having an overflow, because this was a point that, uh, you know, Max had made earlier about lifestyle and lifestyle and being able to invest and being able to do these kinds of things. Um, when your income started growing because of what you were doing with your coach and, and knowing what needs to happen and growing and all that stuff, but like you made a decision, I don't know if this was in conjunction with your coach or on your own, and you said, that's it. 40% of the stuff that comes in is what we're gonna live off like that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what we always did. From the time I started, that, 
Charles said, get used to living on 40% because you have to pay taxes and the business has to be able to, because if I have no money to market myself, I can't continue the business, right? So I kind of always lived that way. And some months weren't as great. So I took a little bit more, but yep. you know, we always had that conversation. It was a but standard, especially, it was a standard, right? It was like a, this absolutely. is like the standard I want to try to live by, which is a lot better than living at, you know, 130%, like overextending. You were like, I want to try to do this at 40%. I want to try to, so it was a new standard. Yeah, and so actually, I when I started in the TC program with the transaction coordinator, I, I don't know if you remember this or not, but we were on a Zoom call, and I said, I have 10 grand in my business account, which was absurd at the time. I'm like, from where we were, and this was only a couple months, so I was like, yeah. to have a 10 grand, and that was, I paid myself, and we were doing, like, we paid our bills at home, and I had 10 grand sitting in, and you kind of said, like, that's a huge feat. Like, no, don't, because I was like, I know what it sounds like, but it was a huge deal to me. It was, it was like breathing and, room, right? Let's face it. I mean, you had gone yeah. through a really tough thing, and, and that is, that's one of those things that keeps you up at night, and that's one of those things that you worry about. You know, I can speak for myself that when you go through those things in your life, you always remember how close they are. You always remember how around the corner those things can be, and they become drivers for you. So to have money, which some people look at 10 grand and it's like nothing, other people look at 10 grand and it would, it's life changing, right? But like to have that 10 grand for you, it was just, wasn't it kind of like a breathing room? It was like an accomplishment. What was it for you? Oh, yeah. Well, I, it was weird. I remember looking at it and I'm like, oh my God, I have 10 grand. Like if I got a listing today, I wouldn't be scared. Cause that, yeah, you get a listing. It's like, now what do I, not what do I pay for it with? You know, yeah. how do I take photos? I, I remember my first listing and I will always, always use my photographer now because he, he kind of like understood my situation. He said, when you close this, pay me for photos. And I will always remember his kindness and his like, he must've believed in me or something because people don't do that. They're, they're in their own business themselves. And so yeah. like, I am like a, like a next door photo, true and true. Like that's all I use in my area because he, he saw that and believed in me. And, but then I'm like, I have 10 grand. <laughs> I'll list something. I'll do, I'll do a video too. You know, like I felt good about it. I'm like, let's do some videos, Matterport or something. Because I could, you know, it wasn't a panic. Like, oh crap, I got this listing and now what am I gonna do, you know? That's awesome, that's awesome. And you, that, that was 10 grand. Yeah, you were, you were actually one of the ones early on that, uh, I mean, back, God, that was back when we started the TC department. Like we were seeing if it was gonna work out. And I think in the beginning I was doing the calls just to kind of like get people in or whatever. Um, tell me what kind of a difference that has made for you. I mean, obviously having your coach and now having, you use a transaction coordinator through Georgia Media. What, what is what kind of difference has that made for you, if any? Um, first of all, it's life changing. <laughs> so it's it's totally life changing. Like I said, I think we've closed forty four transactions together this year. That's forty four closed. Um, yeah. We're in real estate, which means there's probably another like thirty that came on, came off, came on, came off. And I will say, like the the TCs are savages. Like Marlena's my my uh, TC, and she's a savage. Like I sometimes am overwhelmed by the amount of emails that come out from her. I'm like, how did that happen so fast? I feel like I'm her only client. I know it's not true. I know it's not true, oh, but I feel you. that You're way. You're our only client in the whole department. It's <laughs> it. Like we put up fake photos of people who we make them look like TCs, but really we're just hoping it works out with you and we get some referrals because you're it. It's uh, I know. That's that would it. be really, that's how it feels though. With I mean, I put a deal under and I'm like, hey, Marlena, this is under contract. It's bottom line. And it's like, bing, 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 bing. And I'm like, she's overwhelming me. I'm like, and it's gone to the lender. It's gone to title. It's gone and just, she's just so professional all the way around. So <clears throat> interestingly yeah. enough, when you're new, you don't know what you don't know until you realize it. And so going through like the onboarding with the TCs, you're like, oh, I never thought to tell anybody that. Right. I never thought to send that email. Man, these people make me look bomb. Like it's, it's I look like a full process, serve. consistent process, right? Like the consistent oh. process every single time, it makes you look good. Absolutely, and, and it does. And it's like, wow, this girl's really got her crap together. You know, she's they look at my number and I'm one of those with like the 409 numbers. Like I'm in the fours. So everybody's like, Ooh, it's a four. Watch out. It's a newbie. And I'm like spitting out like sweet emails. And I'm like, Hey, check out. We've already talked to the lender and like we bug everybody and we're doing this and that. It, it's it's 100% the reason why I'm able to prospect That's and awesome. continue to do my systems. So it's able, we're, I'm able to do what you always say, right? I can prioritize the creation of new business because someone is handling my old business all the time. So two really quick questions. Number one, uh, what has your coach meant to you? Because you've mentioned Charles over and over again. What has your coach meant to your process and your growth? So first of all, it's, so I think I said this to Red earlier this year. A coach is the biggest reality check you're ever going to get, but also the biggest support simultaneously. And for me, it was that, diff like, so he would say very, 
things that will probably make some people a little uncomfortable, but I told him that's what I wanted. So it's not like he didn't do anything I didn't ask for, but he, I remember we had a really pointed conversation when I was struggling. He said, if I see another Starbucks cup in your hand, we're going to have a talk <laughs> because I had no money. And for me, that was like a reality check. Like Cassie, yeah. what are you spending your money on? Right. Like, why are you doing that? And, and I do have Starbucks now, but it's because I can budget it. And it's nothing wrong can... with that. But the point was, was no. that, look, you didn't have extra money. Like, if you can't invest in your business, why are you spending six bucks for a cup of coffee? Yeah. And, and my, my drink is 641. So you're right. It was six bucks every single day. And he's like, and even down to like how often we were eating out, like he, he really came down on me pretty hard. And he's like, Cassie, I, I love what you're doing. And he even said, like, you follow 80% of what I say, which apparently is a really good number because there's still some things I still struggle with because we're all human. But it was that thing that I needed that said, if I have, so it's funny because you think, oh, you only get two calls a month. It's actually very overwhelming. The, the information packed and the direction packed and the expectation packed into one call that you only have two weeks to accomplish, it's actually quite overwhelming, especially in the beginning when you're doing tons of foundation lane. So for me, it was my direction. It was my path. It was like my focus. It was that thing that I knew I had to get this done because Charles is one of those coaches where if you don't do what you say you're going to do and what we talked about, we're not moving on. Right. And it was that. And also like, you can tell these people really care about you. Like when I talked to Charles, I can tell he cares. Like when right. we talked about my finances, he wasn't like, he wasn't callous about it. He understood, but it was also very firm. Like if this is what we need, this is what we need. He's got, and we're he's gonna got go to care here. about you enough to to get strict with be you honest. on that and be like, this is why this is why you hired us. Like we want you to mm -hmm. get out of this situation, right? Which yeah, and which actually now he's telling me, Cassie, take some time off. Slow down. That's the it's next okay. that's the next phase. That's what we do with everybody. Once we get them in a place where they start making that money and stuff, now it's like, okay, let's look at this next stage now, which is how to back off and how to how to automate some of that and how to enjoy your life and all of that. I'd love to ask you, um, and you know, you don't have to share this, and again, if you don't want to, we'll just edit it out. But um, that ten thousand dollars was a big deal. But you shared with me on a call that we had uh, last month, or I forget exactly when it was, uh, that you've hit another milestone, which I think is a really big deal when you look at how you've been investing in yourself, because some people would listen to this and go, oh, she's paying a TC, a transaction coordinator. Every time she closes, she's, you know, paying a coach. She's paying all these things. Uh, do you mind sharing with everybody what your latest milestone was as far as savings for, for you and your family? Yeah. So it's actually different now because that was a couple weeks ago, but I, I have over $120,000 in cash in the bank. That's amazing. I mean, that's especially in a place where, you know, you don't have, you know, high average price points. You don't have any of that kind of stuff. It's, and it's not like you're in an area where, you know, the average price of a home is $1.2 million for living costs. Like coaching and all of these things have basically taken you to a place where it structures you, lets you know what you should focus on. You still got to work your tail off, but it's not mm -hmm. just about doing that within the business. It's also about the financial side of it and starting to set yourself up for the future. And like we talked about with Max and others, like creating that legacy. And I, for one, couldn't be more proud of you. Um, in closing here, is there any like final advice you'd have for the people? There's people watching all over the world. Uh, there's those that listen to you and relate to you. And, and you know, is there any like final words you'd want to share with them or any final advice? You know, it's funny. I actually had this thought this morning when I was getting ready. And I was like, you know, because like you said, like I went from like negative dollars to when I when I open up like my business today, I'm like, I, if I had to walk away, I could walk away with 120 grand. I could just pull it and take whatever I wanted. And that's just talking about our business. That's not even talking about my personal accounts. You know what I mean? So um, for me, it's that you, you really do control your own future and you're really responsible. Like the information is available to you. You have people here that are literally can just show you the way, but you, you're responsible for doing it. You're responsible for waking up every day and deciding that's the future you want to have and you absolutely can have it. And it doesn't cost you a ton to grow your business yeah. if you talk to the right people who teach you how to grow it. Because my TC has cost me under $1,000 for 44 transactions. Jeez, that's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Good, good. That is sweet. So, hey, uh, I want to thank you for being on. Like I said, you know that I'm super proud of you. And I think today, even more so because I think you've shared some stuff that's going to inspire some people and, uh, you know, look at where you've come from and where you're going. And I can't wait to even chronicle your story more in the future years as far as where you're going. Super proud of you. Thank you so much for being, uh, for being on. Like I said, this is going to help a lot of people. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jared. Have a nice night. You too.